Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm so glad you stopped by today because today we are going to be doing another Zodiac piece. Today we are going to be doing Leo. Anyways, let's get started. Okay, so for our Leo, we're going to be making a bunch of clay pieces. We have a head, some front feet, and some back feet. So let's get started on the clay head first. So I have my tin foil laid out roughly the size that I need the head to be, and I'm going to start covering this in clay, blending everything together, and just trying to figure out the basic shape that I need. And then for the first details that I want to start adding to the face, I'm going to start adding some glass eyes. Now lately I've been working with glass eyes that I've made myself, but these are from a creator on Etsy called uh, Nick's Creation. So these are not eyes that I've made. I've purchased these a while ago and they just kind of worked better than the designs that I currently have of my own eyes. So I'm going to place my eyes, try and make sure they're as even as possible, and then I'm going to start building up clay around them, first to make the cheekbones and to more define the shape of the face, and then to make the eyelids. Now while I'm placing the eyelids, I'm trying to figure out what kind of expression I want for the creature. So normally starting with the eyes expression wise helps quite a bit. So I'm trying to figure out what I want. I wasn't sure if I wanted something aggressive or happy or cute or anything, but I ended up kind of accidentally putting the eyelids in a shape that made him look sad and it looked adorable. So I just kind of went for more of a sad expression. And then once I was happy with how the eyes looked, I'm going to move on to the snout and making the nose and the mouth opening. So um, the snout for this piece is going to be quite large. A lot of my creatures don't really have very like bulbous snouts. Usually they're kind of thin, but for a lion you need something that's pretty solid. So I'm going to start building up my clay a little bit, messing around with the shape of the nose, and then working on adding the lips to define where the mouth is. Now for the texture, I'm mainly going to be adding texture to the snout. The rest of the face is going to get furred and kind of have the fur blend into the snout. So technically I'm not furring the entire face, but I'm going to try and give it the illusion that I did. So I'm going to add a little bit of a fur texture around the chin, and then I'm also going to add a little bit more of a bumpier texture on the lips. Maybe kind of add more line work to where some whiskers might be. I haven't decided if I'm actually going to give this piece whiskers or not. So now that I'm done adding all the details to our clay face, I'm going to put it in the oven to bake for roughly about 45 minutes at 275 Fahrenheit. While that's baking, I'm going to start working on some of our clay feet. So how I'm going to go about making the front and back feet are going to be very different. So I'm going to start on the front feet. They are going to have a wire frame and I'm going to start building up clay on the claws and kind of the base of the foot. After I get all that placed, I will do a pre-bake and then we'll move on to adding more clay to the wire frame. So I'm going to start by covering the tops of the toes with clay, blending everything together and trying to figure out how I want the tops of the feet to look. 
Once I have that in place, I'm going to start adding a lot more clay to the bottom of the toes, mainly because I want to get those really cool pads. Once I like the basic layout, I'm going to rough up the top of the foot with a bit more texture and then I'm going to move on to making the back feet. Now for the back feet, I'm actually going to be using a resin base, mainly because I have a mold for this already. It's not exactly what I need, but it'll like make them weigh a lot less and we won't have to use as much clay if I start with this. I've actually done this before a few times. I've altered this mold into dragon feet and a couple other things. So what we're going to actually do is we're just going to enlarge the foot portion and just add more clay and make the toes look a little bit more rounded. That way they're closer to the size of the front feet because the front feet are quite large and these ones are really tiny compared to that. So I'm just going to start building up my clay, changing the shape of the foot, making sure to blend the clay into the resin as best I can so there's not a weird seam. And then for the claws, I made a few of these little clay claws ahead of time, and I'm just going to push them into the front of the toe and just kind of clean up the edge a little bit. I'm going to add a little bit of texture like we did to the front feet and then I'm going to throw all of the feet in the oven for about 45 to 55 minutes. And then once all of our clay is done baking, has cooled to touch, we can start painting everything. Now for the colors that we're going to be using for our lion, I'm going to have the body white and then the mane and other features like the tip of the tail. These are going to be kind of a sea foamy green color with gold accents. So what we're going to do first is we're going to take all of our clay pieces and we're going to be primering them white. I know the clay is kind of white, but I want it to be really, really white. That way it matches the fur fabric that I'm going to use. Once I'm done primering everything, I'm going to work on adding my colors. So I want to add some extra sea foamy green details to all the clay pieces, mainly kind of like a splotchy color. So I'm going to kind of go over the front of the feet with a little bit of my seafoam green. And then I'm also going to use a little bit on the face. And for the face, I thought it'd be really cool to kind of create like a mask of it. So I'm just going to kind of go across the eyes with my paint. To add more dimension to this, I ended up using two different tones of green, one a little bit lighter at first, and then another that's just slightly darker and a little richer. Now as I was working, I realized that our clay pieces don't really look very lifelike. They kind of just look a little bit too pale. So I'm going to take a light khaki color and I'm going to go over our clay pieces in different spots, mainly on the face, a little around the toes, and just kind of bring a little bit more warmth to the piece. Now for the shadows of the face, I'm going to take a little bit of watered down black paint and I'm going to start going into all the little cracks and crevices and just areas that would have more of a shadow to them like the nostrils. Those are going to be very dark because they, they go in quite a bit. <laughs> And then for like around where the whisker markings and stuff are on the cheeks, I'm going to go over the entire cheek and then take a damp paper towel to wipe away any excess paint that I don't want, leaving the paint in all the little cracks and crevices. And then lastly, I'm going to start adding some gold detail to the face and feet. And like we did with the green, I'm going to add two different tones to kind of add a little bit more dimension to our markings and just kind of bring out more of the features.
I'm also going to be painting the claws gold as well. So that's pretty much it painting wise. I'm going to let everything dry and then I'm going to clean up any paint that I've gotten on my glass eyes. So I'm just going to scrape this off real quick and then we can move on to the sewing. Now if you remember recently I made a sphinx, kind of a snow witch themed sphinx. I had a lot of fun with it and I loved the pattern and I figured it would work so well with this piece. So I just made a few alterations, mainly adding it to where the tail will have a tuft of fur and then we're going to have to have a mane of fur instead of like the hair that we had for our witch. So let's get started on sewing the body and then after that I have a really cool idea for the mane. So for the body we're going to start off with the two sides and we're going to work on the back legs first. So the back legs have a piece of fabric for the inside of the leg and we're just going to sew down the front portion of the leg combining this fabric. Then what we're going to do is the belly piece for the body. We're going to have this, the sea foam green fur as well, and I'm going to connect the two side pieces to this piece of fabric. And then for the fabric for the front legs, these are going to have an inside piece and an outside piece, and we're just going to sew down the front of them combining the two pieces together. We're not going to add these to the body just yet, we're going to wait until the doll is put together a little bit more. And then for the tail, we have a long strip of the white fur fabric and a piece of the sea foam fabric for the very end of the tail. We're going to sew these two pieces together and then we're going to close up the tail and stuff it. Now for the mane, I wanted to decorate it a little bit more. Instead of just using the sea foam fur fabric, I want to add some gold details to it. And I actually have this one yarn that would work really well for this. So I have a bunch of the yarn cut up into small sections that I can sew into place on the fur. And I've got a kind of grid system drawn out on the back of the fur. That way I can have the little gold yarn pieces laid out nice and evenly and kind of in a pattern. And then I also had these really cool beads that worked really well with the color scheme, so I'm going to throw these into the mix of yarn and everything as well. Okay, so we're pretty much ready to put our doll together. I have a wire frame set up. It's a little reinforced around the neck portion and the front legs just because our clay head is a little heavy. And what we're going to do is we're going to start by adding the fabric body to the wire frame. So I'm going to run the wires for the legs through the holes for the legs. And then we're going to take our clay head and we're going to glue it to the end of the wire, which is for the neck. I can then take the fabric for the neck and glue it around the base of the head. I'm going to let that dry a little bit and then we're going to actually add some resin horns that I made. I made these randomly while pouring extra resin and I figured they worked really well so we're going to give our lion some horns just for fun. So how I'm going to add the horns is I'm going to add a little bit more wiring to the wire frame and we're going to cut some holes for where these are going to stick out. Now before I start adding the horns, I'm actually going to sew up and stuff the body first. So let's get that closed up real quick. I've already added the tail to the wire frame, I just slid it over. And when we get to the back of the body, when the rest of it is all kind of closed up and stuffed, we're just going to sew the body fabric to the end of the tail. And then once we have our body closed up, we can then take our horns and we're going to drill some holes in the base of them and we're going to adjust the length of those wires and glue the horns onto those wires.
And then once we have the horns in place, we can work on adding the fur fabric for the mane. So how I'm going to do this is I'm first going to add glue around the bases of both horns, and then I'm going to cut some holes on our fur fabric to where the horns are going to go on the mane. I'm then just going to slide the fabric over the horns and place it in the glue that's at the base of it to make sure that the ends are all kind of connected and stuff. I can then take the fabric for the mane and start gluing it around the base of the head and connecting it there. Once that glue has dried, I can start sewing the rest of the mane down onto the body. So I'm just going to kind of figure out where it's going to connect and I'm going to stitch along that connecting the mane to the rest of the body. Okay, so now that the body is pretty much assembled, we can start adding the legs. So I'm going to start with the back legs first. I've adjusted the length of the wire for them, and we're going to be gluing our uh, resin slash clay legs directly onto the wires. Kind of like what we did with the horns. I can then take the fabric for the back legs and glue it around the bases of our clay feet and then once that's dried we can stuff and close both of those up. Now for the front legs, what I'm going to do is I'm going to trim up the fur just a little bit, make it a little shorter and easier to work with, and then we're going to take our fabric for the front legs and we're going to sew them in place on the sides of the body. We can then take our clay legs for the front and we can start adding them to the wire frame. So I'm going to take the wires for the wire frame and the wires sticking out of the back of our clay feet and I'm going to connect those. So I'm going to take a thinner gauge wire and just wrap them together. And then just like the back feet, we're going to glue the fabric for the legs around the base of the feet, let that dry, stuff, and close up the legs. Now I like how fluffy the front legs are, so I'm not going to touch them, but I do want to trim up the fur on the front of the back legs. So I'm just going to kind of go over that a little bit so I can define the shape of the body a little bit more. And then we'll move on to adding fur to the face. So with the face, I'm going to end up using fur trimmings for some portions of the face that are really tiny, but for others, I'm going to use some larger chunks of fur fabric that I've got cut to fit those sections. And I'm just going to glue everything in place and let it dry. Now you're probably thinking, hey, you didn't add ears to the piece. I know, I almost forgot, but at the end I was like, something's missing. <laughs> so I made some ears real quick and I'm just going to glue these in place right next to the horns. Okay guys, and here is our new Zodiac piece, Leo. I had so much fun with this mane. I loved working with the yarn and stuff, and I need to start doing that more. I've been trying to, so you probably notice every now and again I'll be adding a little more details like that, but yeah, I had so much fun with the colors and stuff for this piece. Anyways, I'm gonna have him up for sale on my website, so if anyone is interested in buying him, you can check the links down below for that. Also, I have a bunch of different art supplies linked down below, so if you're curious on what I like to use to make my art dolls, I've got that all linked down there. Now, if you do buy anything through these links, they are affiliated, so it does help support the channel. Anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching. Make sure to like, subscribe, do all that fun stuff, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!